Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Policki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, so if you're a Minnesota sports fan or sports fan in general, please hit the subscribe button. And if you're a Wild fan, give this video a like because we're going to be talking some Minnesota Wild trade deadline ideas or non-ideas, really, because, you know, the Wild are just on fire as of, as of late. They haven't lost a game since the um, Winter Classic on New Year's Day or lost a game in regulation, I should say. They did lose to the Avalanche in a shootout. But, um, I mean, this team's playing so well right now. Basically, all lines are giving some sort of production. You know, obviously the Kaprizov, Hartman, Zuccarello line has just been absolutely unreal. Then you got that second line with Fiala, Boldy, and Goudreau, which Goudreau's not great, but, I mean, that line's been producing since Boldy and Fiala got paired together. The third line of Eric Snack, Felino, and Greenway has just been – awesome and with Felino out these last uh this last little bit here they've had Duham step up into that line he's been doing a nice job up there and then obviously the fourth line with rotating pieces of Sturm, Duhame, Dewar, uh Bugstad when he's been in but he's been out for a while and even Victor Rass jumps in and you know plays well every now and then so it's tough like I don't it'd be nice to like upgrade from Freddie Goudreau because he's not great by any means, but it seems like Dean Evison really likes him and he's got some speed, which is helpful. But I mean, do you think it's even worth it here for the wild to make a trade here at the deadline? You know, I go back and forth on this and obviously a lot's going to change before the trade deadline actually comes because we're still six weeks out. But at the same time, I love the look of this roster on paper and the eye test when you watch them every night. But at the same time, it's like, do we want to make this as good as possible for this year? It's like there's a ta- there's a real tangible chance in front of us to really take advantage of this Western Conference and make our way through it because, I mean, you start looking around and looking at the other teams in the standings, like the, uh, the last I checked, the top four teams in the Central were the top four teams in the Western Conference as far as mm-hmm. points go. And even those specific teams have all these games in hand, so like it's not even close. So right. then you think about where we rank in our own division – and the only team I truly think is better than us right now is Colorado. But I think yep. we're a better team than St. Louis and Nashville. Although I think we certainly have something to prove in like strictly head-to-head matchups with St. Louis. But yep. that's that's a top for another time. But I'd say when you're thinking about it, and you, there's only one team you think is better than you. It's just, a, it's just a time to try and match them, really, and make this roster as good as it can possibly get when mm-hmm. you have a clear and identifiable chance in front of you here where if you can get past Colorado, who you not get best in the Western Conference and all of a sudden you're in the cup and you're playing for a championship. So it's like right. what what is the that's really the million dollar question for any sport, whether it's hockey, baseball, whatever you want to talk about. It's like at what time do you go all in, put all the chips in, be like, we're winning this year and we're not gonna we're gonna basically go, go around every every corner, look for every go down every avenue that we can possibly find a player that's going to make our team better. So on the one hand, I'm like, I'm comfortable just riding it out. But on the other, it's like, if the, if the value is right out there, it's certainly, I think worth doing just because I, I think this team is really close to being, I mean, I think they're already a Stanley cup contender, but it's like, Mm -hmm. can we, can we put together a good run in in April and May and uh, win a series against a team like Colorado, which just got all this firepower. So I think it's really a balancing act. And I, I think, Seeing as what Garen has done these last couple of years, I I think really he's he's a pretty aggressive guy. I mean, obviously the the buyouts of Parisian suitor kind of surprised. So yeah. I don't don't see why he wouldn't make a trade here at the deadline either. And uh, especially when you're considering the I think the short term cap implications, I believe mm-hmm. we have around 15 million in cap space to play with just because of these uh, the like the help the help from really buying all those contracts, but obviously it's going to, it's going to be some, there's going to be some serious ramifications down the road for that. But yep. just in the short term, I think there's some real cap space there to work with. If you want to go get a guy like Claude Giroux or something. Yeah, exactly. It would, it would almost have to be a guy that's going to be on an expiring deal. Um, and you'd, for me personally, like I wouldn't want to have to give up a whole lot. Like, yeah. cause I think there's a, there's a potential this off season where you're either going to have to trade Kevin Fiala or Matt Dumba. But I don't want to do that during the season. Dumba's an alternate captain, so I don't think you want to mess with that midseason. Um, Kevin Fiala is on fire right now, so obviously you don't want to mess with him and get him out of here and pair Matt Boldy up with someone else. So, um, yeah, like I don't, I don't really know what it would take to get like Claude Giroux or uh, JT Miller. Obviously, would probably be the most expensive center that's out there. He's been playing well for the Canucks. 
But I mean, there's there's options, and really, like it, it either comes down to you go get a center, you could potentially get another defenseman, kind of bolster up your uh, defensive core. Although when healthy, they've actually played pretty well as a group, you know, one through six on that on those defensive pairings. And then the only other kind of question mark is goaltending, just because Talbot's been hurt. But with the emergence of Kakinen, I mean, if as long as Talbot's healthy, you have a solid one-two punch there. You know, whoever's one, whoever's two, it doesn't matter. Uh, we talked about we'd like to see them split 50-50, but um, there's not a whole lot you really need to do here to upgrade. Like, all your wing positions are totally fine, all the way up and down your four lines. Um, and center, you're really solid, too. It, you know, Sturm's a great fourth-line center. Eriksson Ek fits in beautifully on that third line. You know, they're the third line, but, the, you know, they're kind of almost like our first or second line, just given how much ice time they have. Um, then you got Goudreau out there with Fiala and – Boldy, which that's probably the one center you'd want to upgrade. And you obviously don't want to touch that first line with how well they've been playing. So Absolutely not. Yeah. You consider all the seasons, all three of them, having Hartman setting all these records really for his, his career. And then you got uh, Mats, who's on pace to finish top 20 in points in the whole league. And obviously, mm-hmm. Caprice off our superstar. So it's just ridiculous. And you don't want to make any alterations to that, certainly. Right. And a big part of it is the team chemistry. So you know, you don't want to bring in a guy that would maybe throw a wrench into that a little bit. Not saying any of these guys would necessarily, but I guess you just you never really know. If you bring in a Claude Giroux, who's you know an older guy, he's a wily vet. I mean, would he fit in seamlessly here? I, I guess I don't really know. It's it's Felino's team, it's Spurgeon's team, it's Dumba's team. So I mean, it, it it'd be a little bit different, I think. But um, I don't know. Like I just they're playing so well the way they are right now, and they've had guys going in and out of the lineup constantly, whether it's been injuries or COVID, and they just really haven't missed a beat. Like Spurgeon was out earlier in the season, they went on like an eight game winning streak. Um, Brodeen has recently come back, but up until then they were winning games too. So it's like, you know, they've been missing guys, but they're still able to rattle off these wins, and I think that's a testament to how great a job Dean Evison's done and his staff, and just you know basically humbling these guys and saying, we haven't earned anything. So go out there and try and win every single game because all that matters right now is winning. So very impressive. Obviously, you know, we're huge fans of Garen and Evison, but um, I don't know. Like, I think the Wild have a chance with, you know, with the roster the way it is right now. Yeah, I totally agree. I think this team has shown an incredible ability to overcome adversity. And I think that's, that's the, yeah, it's really the hallmark of a great team, really, is even when guys are in and out of the lineup, you still find ways to win every night and you're going to put yourself in a good spot at the end of the season, especially uh, when you win these games and you put yourself in a better spot in the standings and you get more home ice and you get rewarded in April and May. So then you get those big games, you're playing in front of your home crowd, which is one of the best in the NHL, and that's only going to help you. So yep. I, I think that's massive, and I think this team just continues to uh, – battle i mean they get in these games where they like the other night they fall down 0-2 and they battle back and all of a sudden they win 3-2 obviously it got tight there at the end but yeah. a little controversially but still this this team time and time again like you think ah they're out of it this is just one of those nights but it's like oh all of a sudden one thing leads to another bang bang we're back in it and here we yeah. are we're gonna win the game and it's just it's it's amazing it's uh that's that's what makes this team one of the best if not the best in team history so i'm excited to see how this this uh train keeps going down the stretch here yeah, especially now that now we're getting into February, they're going to have a lot of games to finish off this yes. season. Like they're going to be playing a lot of back to backs, um, a lot of games within a week of each other. So it's like, you know, maybe maybe more injuries will pop up, and that'll maybe force them into a trade. I, I heard Russo talking on the broadcast actually the other night about how really, and if they can stay mostly healthy, he doesn't think they'll end up making any sort of splashy move, but if injuries kind of force their hand and say that, you know, Eric Snack gets hurt again, or, you know, somebody gets hurt, but they're going to need a guy for the stretch run. Um, then they, then maybe they'd make the trade, but I think just staying the course. Um, and they're also being smart with some of these extensions. They're, they locked up Greenway for three years. They locked up John Merrill uh, Hartman, obviously before the season had an absolute steal. So, I mean, they, they're being smart here and extending most of these key guys. And like I mentioned earlier, it's going to, you know, Fiala is obviously going to be the tough one to keep after the season's over, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So I think we're sitting in a good spot, and I guess I just don't really want to mess with it. Yeah, exactly. Keep the good chemistry going. If the if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So yeah. I think that that's certainly – there's something to be said about that. And like you said, I think the, the biggest factor here probably is what Russo said, is if we have a lot of – if we have guys dropping like significant players, then you 
might just be forced to make trades. But if everybody's relatively healthy around that time, then it's like, well, let's just see what happens with this group of guys. Absolutely. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Obviously, we're about six weeks out from the trade deadline, so they got a ways to go yet. But yeah. um, that's going to do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit the like button on this video as well. Give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram and leave your comments below. Do you think the Wild should make a trade? Do you think they should stand pat? And who are you targeting if they should make a trade? So until next time, thanks for watching. <laughs>